Nine, Tim Solo performing beside you. This is Mary Grace Round. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm Mary Grace Rowell. I'm a sophomore GMC major from Nashville, Tennessee, technically Hendersonville, um, where Taylor Swift's from. <laughs> I have a younger sister who I dance with and dances pretty much my life. Um, it's what I hope to do with my life. And um, I love peanut butter and kombucha. Not together. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? So technically I started dance when I was three, did it for a year, quit. <laughs> Um, started again when I was seven while I was also doing softball and gymnastics So it's kind of just a fun extracurricular activity and then as I got older I kind of had to narrow down my extracurriculars just with school and um, other things So I ended up slowly dropped out of softball dropped out of gymnastics and then have been dancing since then So I think we're at let's see if I started when I was seven almost 14 years mm. So long time. What did competing look like for you? When okay, you were 10 years old so I started rec dance at seven when I started and did that for about three years. So that was just one class a week, perform at the recital. Then when I was 10, I joined a company which was going to competitions, more intensive rehearsals, rehearsal schedules. And I think I started just in hip hop. And then the next year I added tap, so doing hip hop and tap, which I don't really even do anymore. Um, and then by 11 and 12, I was doing, I had my first solo, I think at 11, which was lyrical. <laughs> and from there on, just continue to train more and more. Um, I'd say competition was a huge part of my growth just because it does push you. You're constantly being compared to people and although that sounds bad, um, it was a good incentive to get better. Um, but that also comes with a lot of like personal issues. Like you are comparing yourself. You're looking in the mirror a lot of hours in the day. Um, you're kind of having to sacrifice your social life to be at the studio from four to nine right after you get out of school. So. There was a lot that came with it, but I look back and none of that compares to the joy that I get from dancing even now. Contemporary and lyrical, once I branched into that, I had never done lyrical until I competed as solo doing lyrical, which is kind of out of the norm. Um, but it just came really naturally to my body. Uh, that sounds weird, but you know what I mean. Um, and I, I still love it. It's probably my favorite. It's If I'm going to go in the studio, I'll be doing contemporary improv. It just feels great. Um, <laughs> style that I'll continue to struggle with probably for the rest of my life is ballet. I had a pretty difficult teacher um, not only was she hard on me in my dancing, but also just hard on me in life. And um, that's not anything I'll ever forget. It made me a better person and it challenged me a lot as a person, but it made it difficult to find joy in that style when I'm constantly thinking about and having the inner dialogue that she gave me from age 10 and on. Um, jazz is one of my favorites now that I started, probably the latest style I started the latest, but it's, it's so much fun. It's hard though, it's really hard. So that was when I kind of had to learn, like bringing back a little bit of my gymnastics sharpness um, and also incorporating a little bit of sass. <laughs> so that was fun too. Um, so someone who's impacted my dance journey a lot is one of my lovely old dance teachers. Her name's Ariel. And actually this is so a God thing, but we reconnected a couple of weeks ago and she's helping me push forward into my career, which is awesome. Um, but even during that time when I had a ballet teacher that was really difficult, she was always super encouraging and just let us be who we needed to be in the studio and never pushed us too much. Um, and it's super cool that I've been able to reconnect with her because she's encouraging me that if I want to dance in New York or if I want to move to LA or move to Austin or pursue film, like anything that I'm interested in, not only does she have connections in the industry, which is awesome, but she just wants to be there for me. And I will always appreciate that. And then of course my family has just been the most encouraging. To have a kid say, I want to go dance professionally, which is not a very stable career just because it's based on like one audition and one job and then the next, it just means so much to have both of my parents supporting me in this. Um, they're helping me find summer opportunities. They're really encouraging me as I make connections um, and pushing me to continue training even amid classes and 
sorority things and everything. Um, so that's been great. And then my sister, who's coming here next year, is a dancer. She is <laughs> the best dancer I've ever seen. But she, she is probably the most encouraging of anybody. Um, she works really hard. She works really hard, and that's just so much fun to be able to do that alongside her. She pushes me to go in the studio more often or to push my limits um, with what my brain can create, and that's just been so much fun. What was the biggest thing you struggled with when it came to dancing when you walked out of the studio, and oh. how did you overcome it? Oh, that's hard. Um, so, I kind of already mentioned this, but as a dancer, you're looking in the mirror many hours a day, and um, when you're dancing with younger girls, I obviously look a little bit different as I continue to get older. And so I think something that I brought out of the studio and had to learn to kind of leave in the studio was just struggling with body image. Um, and that's something I still struggle with, like I'll be so honest, but um, just understanding that like the Lord created me as I am, like in this moment, in today, like I'm supposed to look how I look and no other way. Um, so that's constantly something that is coming up when I'm improving, just like thinking about that and trying to work through that. Um, but I also have so many people supporting me in that. So that's really sweet. The dance industry is just hard in that way, similar to modeling or just any celebrities, I think probably struggle with that as well, but just needing to fit a certain mold, it's just it's the mold it's been for centuries. Um, and thankfully that's not necessarily the case everywhere anymore, but it is hard to always be looking in the mirror and be able to pick yourself apart when God never asked us to do that. Dance is just, awesome. I think it's been a place that I can process how I'm feeling. I know I've gone into the studio several times in college when things are just hard and turned on a song and just moved. Um, I think sometimes there's this pressure to create dance for people to see it, but I try to really think about creating dance for me to feel it um, because that's that's the origin is for the feeling and for the emotion. Um, but. It is, it's been community, it's been an escape, um, it's been a challenge, all of the above. Uh, I think it's cool that dance is something you can always work to be better at. There's never really a limit. Um, you can always be more turned out, you can always get your leg higher, you can always move sharper, or, you know, dance bigger. So that's super cool, especially for someone like me who is an achiever and likes to um, continue to improve. There's so much room for that in dance, which I love. So I danced, like I said, on company for, by the time I graduated, eight years, which is a long time to be with the same people. I knew my schedule, like the back of my hand. Um, I was used to training in every style all of the time. Um, and so coming to college, I changed to dancing six hours a week with all new people. Um, it was really hard. It was really hard just not having the same intensity and not doing as many styles. We were, we we're more concentrated on ballet and modern here. And that pushed me a lot. Um, actually coming into college too, I was a little bit burnt out on dance, honestly, because I'd been dancing so long. And being pulled away from the intensity of it made me realize how big of a part of my life it is and how much I love it and how I'll never stop loving it. And so it's actually pushed me a lot to seek other opportunities outside of my six hours a week. and create new connections. Um, the director of the dance company, Elisa, and I have talked multiple times now just about my career and she's been a great help because she did live in New York and she does have connections up there. So that's what I end up wanting to do. I know that even if it feels hard to be not doing the same thing as I was in high school, God has so much of a purpose in me being here and me being on the dance company, even if it is just one connection to New York or you know, modern training every week that I don't necessarily love, but I know that I need. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Choreography is like a big part of my dance world now. I started choreographing my junior year of high school and did my sister's solo, which was really sweet. And I've done that for the past three years, so we've gotten to do that together a lot. Um, and then in that time, I choreographed eight pieces prior to my senior year for my studio. And then prior to my freshman year, I choreographed 15 at my studio, which was awesome. Looking forward, I've got two more years on the dance company. Um, I'll get to do both with my sister, which is what I'm looking forward to the most. And then I found out last week that I'm gonna have the opportunity to work on staff at a dance convention, which is just taking several classes over a weekend and learning a lot from really incredible choreographers and teachers. So I'll get to help out um, there and also do their advertising, which fits really well with 
journalism, which is super fun. And then beyond that, the dream is to go to New York and be on Broadway. Um, <laughs> we'll see how that works out. But I have a lot of people in my corner, which means the world because right now I can dream big and they can help me make connections that will get me up there even if it's in a crappy flat. Um, contemporary company up there would also be great. Um, I do want to keep all of my options open, of course, because the dance industry is hard. It's really hard. It's really hard to break into um, and it's really hard to book consistently. So if I move to Austin or Atlanta or even back to Nashville, those also might be great options and we're just keeping all the doors open and continuing to pray through that and let the Lord direct this passion. What of his advice to your sister? And as she graduates high school, finishes her company, and now gets to join alongside you at Sanford? Yeah, okay. Oh, that's super hard. Um, if I could give Caroline one piece of advice as she finishes out her senior year and prepares to come to Sanford, it would just be that no time in the studio is wasted time and just to soak it up, cliche, but I didn't really know what I had until I didn't have it anymore. So just to soak up all that time with friends, all that time in the ginormous studios at home, um, and to really let all of the feelings come during recital and it's your last time on stage with that company, which she's been a part of for even longer than I had. Um, and yeah, this has been awesome. Thank you guys. Yeah, this is awesome, actually.